Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about something super useful for developers and system administrators, and that's how to convert a PowerShell script into a standalone .exe file and use it as an application. Automation is key in software development and system administration. Sometimes you need to ensure that a PowerShell script runs every time an application is launched. One solution is to link the script to the app's shortcut, but an even smoother approach is converting the script into a standalone executable. The users will get a seamless experience when running it, and you can rest easy knowing the script runs consistently, just like in your regular program. Now, to convert PowerShell scripts into .exe file, we are going to use a tool called ps2.exe which is basically from PowerShell to .exe. It's your script inside an .exe file, so when the .exe is run, the script executes automatically without needing to open PowerShell. It's a win-win situation. Your script runs reliably, and users get a simple, professional-looking executable. So, first of all, we need to install the ES2 .exe module. You can either download it online or simply install it directly from PowerShell. So with PowerShell open, we can use the install module commandlet, which is available in PowerShell. And we are going to say ps2exe. And of course, this is from an untrusted repository. I'm going to confirm yes to all of them. Ah, and I already have it installed on my system. Good. Now that we know that this is installed, we can simply open it by typing win PST PS2 exe and this will pop up the graphical front end, right? So what PS2 exe is looking at is the source PowerShell script, where to output it, right? The target exe file. You can also place an icon file. Um, and prepare some other information for the executable, such as the version, the file description, product name, copyright. Then you have some options here. For example, you can compile a graphic Windows program, uh, suppress the output or the error output, require administrator rights or runtime, right? In case you need to do any things with an admin right, and generate a configuration file. I'm going to show you a sample PowerShell that I have here. All that it does is have hello world in a simple variable, which I'm going to output it to a file, right? If I run this, everything works fine. I go here, the new log is here, hello world, blah, blah. Good. So let's delete this. Let me minimize this. Let me select it from my, this is here. The target file will be the same with an exe and I can hit compile. Disappears, right? And press enter to leave. Now, as you can see here, the example.exe has been compiled. And if I double click it, of course, nothing will appear. But if I check here, the new logo is created and everything is fine. So. As it seems, this is an easy way to convert your scripts. However, I have noticed that there are cases where PS2EXE doesn't actually function as you want. One example that I can give you is with the script location. Now, there are multiple occasions where you would need to gather the actual script location and write something near it, right? So how do we do that with PowerShell? Well, everybody knows that in PowerShell, we can do something like write host and we have our PowerShell script root, right? If I hit enter here, yes, it will, it will say that my script is located on the desktop, which is nice, right? But then we have another problem. Let's say that I want to have the output of the file to be the PowerShell script root and uh, something like example log.txt, right? And instead of writing the file to this location, which is actually hard coded right now, I'm going to use this variable here, right? So I want to write everything variably, right? Let's save the script. Let's go back 
so this guy i'm going to delete the example.exe that i have here on my desktop okay so this is deleted cool okay and now i'm going to compile it again give it some time there you go now it's compiled and if i double click it again you see here access to the path c example log.txt is denied why is this happening because when you convert your script with powershell 3xe you are not actually uh, running the script again right so that executable it's not running a ps1 script anywhere that specific code that you have inside your powershell is transposed inside the exe file and your code is actually encapsulated inside that exe file now if we have a look at the uh, jetprince.pick which is an awesome application actually if we open up our example exe right and go to the main application now you will see here that you have this string right here right string one encoding blah blah and we are trying to convert from base64 string right and you you might wonder what is this exactly and now if i open powershell again and let's say i'm going to do this and i want to take this string that i have here right so copy and paste here right and if i hit enter hey guess what it's exactly our script right here what ps2exe is doing it, it's actually a whole program behind it and in your main application your code is encoded into base64 and then decoded at the runtime and here is where the problems appear that you might have some instances where your powershell scripts will not work as expected this is just an example i've encountered many many times uh, because i had the situation on where i needed to get my current script running location and write something near it but there might be some other cases where powershell 2xc might not be your best example unfortunately there aren't very many examples or utilities out there that can output a perfect executable file i know that technically powershell is based on net but again it's the way you are running it and that's why you will not have a perfect mechanism in place to make it work now that you have created the exe you can also integrate it into a software package right and you can do that using advanced installer and it's quite easy if we open up advanced installer i can create a new project let's say an installer project i can go into files and folders and in the application folder, I can simply just drag and drop my example.exe. Uh, I can also create a shortcut uh, for the install file that I have here, right? I can also say that this is an advertised shortcut. Of course, I don't want an icon for it. I can also run it as an administrator in case you forgot to place the flag inside the PowerShell 2exe. And then you can simply just save and build your project and install it. And that's it. You have successfully converted PowerShell script into an executable and integrated into a software package. This is a great way to streamline your automation tasks, improve user experience, and make your scripts run more reliably. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.